Opera singer Alison Pohl, who grew up in Lindenhurst, recently talked about her career, her passion for the art form, and what it takes to be a professional opera singer. I've been singing opera professionally since 2007. I made my debut professionally. I've worked for a lot of different companies. Some small, some big, some nearby, some very far away. But I grew up in Lindenhurst, um, definitely started my vocal studies on Long Island, and then was encouraged by my first voice teacher to go be a voice major. I went to SUNY Purchase Conservatory of Music for my undergrad, which was extremely intense and uh, really weeded out the ones who were not passionate about it. And um, I learned everything I know about stage technique in particular from the wonderful faculty there. And of course, I learned how to sing. My, my foundation for singing is, is from Purchase. And then I went immediately to my uh, master's degree at Boston University. And I love living in Boston. And again, I mean, it's just a musician city. And then right after that, I went to Italy actually and did a job there. And then I was a resident artist at Virginia Opera for a while. And I, I covered many lead roles there and I did small roles as well. I did tons of outreach for elementary schools and other um, places in the community and really bringing opera to the people and educating about opera, which is so important to me. And I've also worked a lot for Opera New Jersey. So I was kind of back in the Northeast for a while. Um, I've gone back to Virginia to a company called Opera on the James, which is in Lynchburg. I've worked for them a couple times, going to work for them again in January of 2012 for a concert series. I've worked for Opera Saratoga up in Saratoga Springs. Love it there. I had a great experience. I did my first Carmen there. I did Frisquita. And uh, I'm kind of just, and also I'm, I'm based in New York City. I live in New York City, so I've done a lot of work in New York City as well. In between my concerts where I go out of town, I like to do things at home and uh, to do to be in New York City and to be doing opera, really, and you know any classical music actually. It's just kind of a wonderful thing to be a part of, and it's a really like great community. And of course, there's tons of singers in New York, so um, we're not weird. We're not aliens. There's a lot of us. <laughs> you might not know it, but the person sitting next to you on the subway is probably an opera singer. And uh, I'm really into dispelling all of these opera stereotypes as well. That's one of my, my main things, to be an ambassador for the art form and show everybody that opera is cool and young and fun and sexy and hip and stylish and uh, not obese and not you know boring and not foreign and actually really modern and current and cool. So that is something that I am on a mission to uh, tell the world and I do it every day. Every time someone asks me, what do I, what do you do? I say, I'm an opera singer and they're always shocked. They're like, you, you know, you can't be an opera singer. And then I kind of tell them how opera is, is about believability. Opera is about the look also, as well as the sound. It's about acting, it's about art, it's about a story. You know, I mean, that's what's special about opera. It's about drama, it's about a storyline, and they're just as moving and interesting as any of your favorite movies or any of your favorite TV shows. That's how opera is. It's very current, it's very relatable, and it's very believable, honestly. It's not some weird fantasy about gods and goddesses, you know? It's actually about people. It's about me and you and everybody, so. Most recently, Paul performed on Long Island in the opera Don Pasquale as part of the Sands Point Preserve Opera Series with the North Shore Music Festival. I've been singing the aria from this opera for many, many years, and it suits me so well, and um, it's always been a role that I've dreamt of doing. Norina is such a fun character because it really it's three characters in one. First, you're Norina. You're yourself. She's kind of a, a straight uh, girl who has a, a streak of anger in her, but is generally very sweet, um, madly in love with her fiance, truly deeply in love with him and would do anything for him. And uh, then you quickly switch to Sophronia, which is the her, uh, her acting role that she's playing um, in order to trick Don Pasquale. And she's very sweet and innocent and pious. And then as soon as their fake marriage is made official, she 
Pops, which is again to be nasty, mean, Sophronia, and then back to Noreen at the end. So you really are constantly changing. It's like three roles in one, like I said. So it's really a great challenge as an actor. Um, a lot of other opera characters, there's an arc, of course, but you're, you're always yourself. Whereas with Norina, you're acting within acting within acting, you know? So it's, it's a great challenge and I, I love the acting aspect of the career and I care very much about my acting um, just as much as I do my singing, for sure. So it's, it's great, it's really fun. And she's so spunky, she's so feisty, you know, and she's so multi-dimensional. She's not flat, she's not one character, she's many and she's deep and she is a human being, you know, with all of her facets of her personality and she's complicated. Basically all these roles that are that suit me are the kind of young uh, love interest ingenue type of role. And, and also vocally, I mean, I, it's a dream role. It's so much fun and it's bel canto, um, which is the style that is beautiful singing, very, uh, it means beautiful singing, very complicated vocal lines and very simple orchestral lines. So it really shows off the voice and brings out the voice. That was the point that these composers were trying. This was their point of view. Focus on the voice. The voice is the most important instrument with, that was their belief during this time in history. That's why we call it bel canto, beautiful singing. It doesn't have any like insanely high notes, but it just kind of sits high. There's lots of high notes and there's lots of coloratura, which is fast moving passages. That these are the staples of bel canto style. Although hard to believe by the sound of her voice, Paul says she wasn't a natural singing talent when she started. She says it was her passion for opera that kept her going all of these years, and that it took a lot of hard work and dedication to get where she is today. Uh, voice lessons and hours and hours in the studio and hours crying and hours practicing and hours working your ass off and it's really hard and you, there are many times when you really want to give up you know but um, I, I can't I, I'm incapable it's just it's too deeply a part of me it's too it's too much the, the dominating thought um, of my life when I wake up and when I go to sleep you know this is what I care about the most it's not necessarily singing it's I care about music I care about art I I care about being a creative person and expressing myself in this way. Being on stage, it's my, my biggest passion. So, and trust me, it takes a lot of work, so I did not get here like automatically and I was not a natural born singer. I wasn't. I was not. I did not come to my first day of college being like, here I am, I can do everything. I actually was pretty awful. Pretty bad. I mean, really, I, I could not sing my way out of a paper bag. No. And it, it just took tons of training, tons and tons of training. You know, so it's just like any other skill. You have to really hone your craft. And we're athletes, you know, just like um, professional football players who have to practice a lot all the time. Singers have to practice too. So that's my story. <laughs> In Sands Point, Chris Kalora reporting.